For the past five years, I've had the opportunity to work with Amazing Facts as part of their evangelism team with the Amazing Facts Center of Evangelism. And as part of our work, we travel around the world sharing the gospel with others and offering training programs as well. And so today I want to just share with you a couple of my experiences, a couple of the, the miracle stories from our travels. We're going to begin today in the beautiful country of India. If you travel to India, the incredible aroma of the spices will just fill your, your nostrils. Just beautiful, beautiful smells, beautiful colors, all the bright saris that are there. And there in India, we were holding nine prophecy seminars with our AFCO graduates. Every night I would travel around to all of the different seminar sites. One night in particular, I went to one seminar. Now, this seminar was held out in the open air. They just had a little tarp hung out over them, and everyone sat there on the ground with an ox grazing right nearby. And I sat and I listened to the preacher that day. After the program ended, a family approached us, and they said, will you come to our house? Our son is ill. Will you come and pray for him? Sure, yes, of course, we'd be happy to. And so that night, late at night, in the dark, we began to wind our way through these little dirt paths, passing these houses that were shacks made out of not much and looking as though they were easily uh, could be pushed over, fall over. As we wind our way through, all the little kids coming out to see who these people were, we finally approached one little house, one little shack, just one room where a whole family lived. As we walked in, there on the cot was a man. And if you've ever seen the look of death before, he had it all across his face. He was sweating profusely, going through chills. You look at his face. He tried to open his eyes, but he couldn't. He was so weak. He was so exhausted. And as I looked at this man, I said, there is no way that this man is going to live. There's nothing we can do in that part, that area. There were no good hospitals to bring him to. It would have just hastened the dying process. And I'm standing there feeling very helpless. What do I do? How do I help this man? And in that moment, that Hindu family approached us yet again, and they said, can you pray for him? Oh, yeah, I, I guess we should. And so we all gathered around him in a circle and we laid our hands upon him and we began to pray for this man. With heavy hearts, we got up, we said goodbye, and we walked out of the house. Of course, I wasn't really expecting this man to live. His condition was so bad. And I walked home that night again with a heavy heart. The next night, I came back to that same prophecy seminar and his family approached us once again. But this time, with smiles on their faces. Have you heard? Have you heard? Have I heard what? Have you seen him? He's here. What do you mean he's here? Our son, he's here. He's at the seminar. How in the world could he be here at the seminar? I just saw him last night. I thought he was going to die. And that Hindu family turned to me and they said, of course he's here. Of course he's healed. You prayed for him. Can you imagine how humbling that felt? Here is a Hindu family that has more belief in my God than I do. Of course he's healed. Of course he's here. You prayed for him. It's beautiful to see God work hands-on right in front of you as the Lord did that day. Now travel with me just a little bit north and we're going to the country of Nepal. There with the beautiful Himalayan mountains in the background and Everest not too far away. We see these beautiful countryside uh, residences. And I remember there was one village we again were going to hold a prophecy seminar in. But we were told this area is very tough. It was a Hindu area. And they said this village is not open to Christians. In fact... Just two days before we were supposed to hold our prophecy seminar there, two men came into a Christian man's home and they stabbed him for sharing his faith. Now again, here we are and we're going to hold a public seminar preaching about Jesus. And two days prior, someone was stabbed for sharing their faith. We thought, what do we do? 
Should we still hold the seminar or not? But then an idea came to us. By the grace of God, we were working there with a medical team, Amen Medical Team. And we had dentists and physicians and nurses there with us. And we said, you know, the only way to reach this community is to show them, hey, we care about you. You are important to us. And so that next day, we set off with our medical team to this remote village over two hours away. Traveling over quite dangerous roads, we finally approached this village, uncertain of what we might face. We set up the medical clinic, and the lines began to form all the way down the road. Now, there was a problem. We only had one dentist, but we had 40 patients. How in the world can one dentist treat 40 patients in one day? And yet, by the grace of God, that one dentist was able to accomplish this miracle. By the grace of God, we were able to serve many, many people in that community. Their hearts began to open. They became more receptive. And by the grace of God, we were able to hold a public prophecy seminar there in that very village. One of our other speakers from another village not too far away had an 18-year-old girl that was attending his seminar. This girl accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior, and she wanted to be baptized but she was scared. Our speaker went and visited her house one afternoon. And as he came into her house, he noticed that she was trembling with fear. And he asked through the translator, what's wrong? Why is she afraid? And he said, well, she is afraid that her parents will kill her if she makes the decision to be baptized. Our speaker was, of course, quite shocked by this news. And soon thereafter, he actually met those parents, and they sat down and they began to talk together. The parents had many questions about Christianity. And Stan, the speaker, began to explain and to open up the Bible to them. After some time, the family turned and they looked at him as their daughter trembled silently in the corner. And they told Stan, we love our daughter. And if she has decided to become a Christian, if she wants to be baptized, we will support her in this decision. Complete miracle as God truly changed their hearts. At the end of these prophecy seminars, we had a baptism there in the river very, very early in the morning. Now, again, this is Nepal near the Himalayan mountains in the winter. It was cold. And yet a group of believers rose up early to be baptized. They didn't want the villagers to see because of the risk it might have on their life. And yet they were willing to walk into that frigid water and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. Now traveling over to the country of Thailand, a bit of a warmer experience, delicious food again, and just beautiful, beautiful people. We, again, were having challenges there, how to reach the people, how to show them, hey, I care about you. You are important to me. One of our AFCO speakers, a man by the name of Manasseh, was ministering to a group, a small village, a very, very remote village. And he had a young girl that was coming to his prophecy seminar. He noticed that she had a big bandage on her arm, and underneath was a really horrible infection. Manasseh was not a physician. He didn't know much about medical care, but he knew how to, how to treat a wound, and her wound was not being treated. Infection had definitely continued to, to grow. And so he began to come to her house every single day, and he would unwind that bandage, and he would begin to treat her wound. The family was there, and he soon built a friendship with the father and, and the mother of this little girl. This family was very staunch, very strong Buddhist. But after a few weeks of getting to know Manasseh, the father approached him and he said, you know, Manasseh, I have decided that I want to become a Christian. Manasseh was excited and he turned to him and said, brother, what led you to this decision? And the man said, I have seen the love that you have for others and I want to have that same love in my heart. You know, when we minister to others, when we reach their needs, when we self-sacrifice for them, it changes lives. 
when people see Jesus through us, when we minister like he did, it can't but make an impact in our community. The story is told of a man who was considering all the trials in the world, considering all the pain that people go through of death, of cancer, of, of horrible atrocities that they face. And as he's considering all this pain and all this turmoil, the famines, he began to ask God, God, why? God, why don't you do something? God, why don't you help them? And suddenly that still small voice rang out in his head. And God told him, you know what? I did do something. I created you. In other words, God has created us so that we can minister to the needs of those around us, so that we can reach their hearts, so that we, like Christ of old, when he walked on earth, can show them, I care about you. You are important to me. Jesus loves you. By the grace of God, today, may our eyes be open. May we see the needs around us, and may we truly serve others with the heart of Christ.